Hello everyone, I thought I'd just nip up to the van on my own just to um, run you through some of the uh, tech that we've put in this since we bought it and run through some of the filming gear that we use I thought some of you might be a bit interested in our particular way of doing things and uh, you know what we've actually done to this since we bought it So this was in the van when we got it this is one of those Oyster self-seeking satellite systems to be honest, we've only used it a few times. It does work, but you've got to get a good line of sight to a satellite. I think a lot of the places where we've parked up just been blocked from getting a satellite signal. But yeah, when it works, it's it's a good little thing. So this is what we use for internet. Teltonica Rook 955. It's a 4G router that runs on 12 volts. It's got its own SIM card in there and we've not installed everything properly yet we've got these with two of these little aerials i've just gone hooked onto a coat hanger at the moment they provide the wi-fi around the van now as well as doing wi-fi i don't know if you can see underneath there i don't know if that's showing you it does have a wired ethernet connections four of them which will be quite handy uh, because eventually, I don't know where I've put it now, we have got a 12 volt DVR security surveillance cameras. Uh, records to a hard drive, but it also uploads to the internet. So going in via an app on his phone, we can view all around the van eventually, once it's all up and running, uh, from anywhere we are, just by logging in on his phone. Still need to connect the aerial up for it. At the moment, we just sit it up there, and when we park up at night or wherever, we open the skylight and just bob it through. There's quite a length of cable on it, so I would somehow like to get a pole that raises up on the roof. If anybody knows of anything that I could just put up so it's quite high up and then pull it down when we're driving, if you let us know, that would be great. We have got an inverter on board. This is a 1500 watt inverter it's just one of those cheap ones it's not sine wave or anything like that it's only really there for charging things like uh, drill batteries batteries for the e-bikes that type of thing now not long after we got the van we started gaining a few electrical gremlins this is the control unit that i found underneath the seat so basically this it's a b2b charger and it had got I think, well, standard, they come with a mains charger built into them. And some of these obviously had problems before because they've modified it. And these wires here went to a sergeant charging unit. Unlike a standard B2B, we've got all these connections in and all these connections out. Rather than having one thick wire that comes from your alternator and a big thick wire that goes out to your battery, there was all these wires connected to these connectors here. And to make it even more fun, they were all the same colour, they're all black. And they're also connected up to this control panel. I don't know what the logic was in switching everything individually. Well, it was a right headache trying to figure out what everything did, where everything went to, and then get it all working again. But, uh, but it is working now, so I'll show you what we've got under the seat in place of that thing. Yeah, you'll have to excuse the cable management, it's not the tidiest at the moment. But this is the Renogy, it's combined B2B and solar controller. I haven't got the solar connected up yet, but there is 300 watts of solar on the roof ready to go in. Uh, a lot simpler wiring, I think I'm a bit overkill with the battery cables. Well, that's the only cable in that I've got at the time, and I thought better to be too thick than too thin. And we just connected up to this 100 amp lithium battery. As you can see down there, we have the Victron Smart Shunt. I didn't buy the one that has a gauge going to it because we just use it on Bluetooth. And just over there is the Sergeant Mains charger that somebody had fitted into it. Now I've emailed Sergeant to see if it's safe to use with my lithium battery but they couldn't really tell me 
So rather than risk that, I've not wired that up. So I've gone and bought the Victron mains charger. This has got a setting on him for lithium, so I know this is not going to do any damage to a 500 quid battery. So, you know, for the safest option, what is this one? 30 amp. Up on the dashboard, we've got this Android tablet on a mount. We use this for the sat nav, we use Copilot, which is quite good. I think it's about 12 quid for the year. And also, we've got on there, what have we got? Search for sites, LPG stations, park for night and the Victron app, so we can uh, view the battery status. Let's have a look. And also we've got next door's Land Rover on there as well. There we go, so it says as battery is 100% charged. Its van's been stood here a week and a half, I think, so it's obviously not losing anything. Start a battery there, 12.76. So yeah, this is dead handy. It's a lot better than what we did have. It's just before there was like just a little LED thing on the control panel. You press it in and it was either red or green. This is a lot more accurate. The other thing we've got is this sensor that goes outside the van. Uh, it's just a PIR and it fits onto a clamp on the outside. We tend to use this mainly when wild camping, if it's somewhere that we're a bit unsure about. Uh, but what it does, when somebody walks past the sensor, like I say, up on the roof we've got 300 watts of solar. I've not got round to drilling a hole through to get the cables down yet, or well, I've not had the bottle to drill a big hole in the roof. The only other real mod that I've done is a refillable gas bottle. This saves an absolute fortune in gas. I think it costs us about eight and a half quid to fill that from empty. For when we're filming the road going forwards, we use the Nextbase 522. I've just added on this, which is the, what do they call it, the cabin camera. So this also records inside the cab as well as what's going on outside. For the shots I put on where we're driving and you can see us in the cab, it, we just use one of these cheap 35 quid GoPro copies. It's actually not a bad picture, the sound's pretty terrible. Um, but picture wise, it, it doesn't come out too bad and it's quite a wide angle lens. Pretty much all the filming's done on the phone. Uh, this is the Pixel 6 which was pretty good video. In the standard camera app, I think you can do is it 60 frames a second. But if, uh, if you use Filmic Pro, yeah, you can get right up to 240 frames a second. So you can do some pretty extreme slow motion stuff if you want to. The gimbal we use is the DJI. Osmo Mobile 3, I think they just call them the OM now. It's a pretty good bit of kit, especially like this active track. So as you move around the van, it follows you about. You can lose it if you run about, but I'm not much of a runner nowadays. But just taking pictures, we've just got one of these Nikon Bridge cameras. It doesn't do a bad job. Video's not that clever. I think it only does up to 720p. Um, but the still photos are quite good. Although well, we always forget to take pictures. For the drone shots, we've got the Mavic Mini and DJI. This is what Heather bought me for my birthday. I ain't had a chance to do a lot with it at the moment. First time I took it out, it was that windy. I couldn't use it. Um, we've flown it a couple of times while I've been away, but I've not really put much online. Hopefully this summer, when the weather's a bit better, we'll get to use it more. Well, I think that's about most of it covered. I hope you found some of it interesting. And if there's anything you want to know, uh, you want to ask me about any of the stuff we use, or anything that I've not covered, I think I've covered most of it. Apart from things like LED lights we've fitted, then just leave us a comment, and we'll catch you next time. Cheers, folks.